वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन द इलेक्टिव कोर्स ऑफ बी एस सी एग्रीकल्चर इन फिफ्थ सेमेस्टर इलेक्ट एग्राउन थ्री वन वन एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट यूनिट थ्री इज कंटिन्यू इफ यू रिमेंबर माई लास्ट लेक्चर हाउ द एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट कैन बी यूटिलाइज दिस टॉपिक हैज बीन कवर्ड सो हाउ द एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट कैन बी यूटिलाइज इन दैट आई एक्सप्लेन दैट वन वे इज टू यू प्रोड्यूस बायोफ्यू इथेनॉल इज ए बायोफ्यू बायो वेस्ट एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट कैन बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू इथेनॉल दिस कन्वर्जन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट टू इथेनॉल इज डन बाई द बायोलॉजिकल एजेंट्स सो इट इज नोन एज बायो कन्वर्जन so this is the seventh lecture of unit 3 under the biofuel section of agricultural waste management the title is bioconversion of agricultural waste to ethanol a biofuel in today's lecture i will cover the following topics utilization of agricultural waste again this is just to remind that these are the scope where the agricultural waste can be utilized so fuel production through agricultural waste or fuel production from the agricultural waste is the one aspect or is a one option that agricultural waste can be utilized so agricultural waste can be utilized as bioethanol so what is bioethanol so because this in this topic bioethanol is to be discussed so definitely we should know the ethanol what is ethanol process of bioethanol production definitely the whole process i will cover and i will explain here the flow chart of bioethanol production process will also be explained and even the whole process i will explain you through the flow chart agricultural waste and microorganism used in bioethanol production and lastly the advantages of bioethanol will also be covered so again this is a revision but this is just to recall that these are the options where agricultural waste can be utilized so this agricultural waste can be utilized as biogas in last lecture we had biogas technology i have explained the last lecture was the just the revision of the biogas which i have already explained in unit 2 in detail all about all thing about biogas and uh, the remaining part of biogas that is digested bio slurry which is used as organic manure that things have been discussed the other utilization of agricultural waste is in bio fertilizer in leather industry is in meat in alcohol production in phosphorus and calcium extraction from the agricultural waste and agricultural waste can also be utilized in pulp and paper industry so here it is very clear mentioned that this fuel is one option where the agricultural waste can be utilized means fuels can be obtained from the processing of agricultural waste so what type of fuel that can be one is biogas so that part is over another is ethanol ethanol is also known as fuel so what is the type of ethanol which can be extracted from the agricultural waste what is the process of ethanol extraction from the agricultural waste that things will be discussed in this lecture ethanol and bioethanol these two things you should understand you should understand are the are they are different are they different ethanol and bioethanol no it is not the different the bio means thus just the ethanol which is extracted from which is extracted through the biological process is bioethanol otherwise 
ethanol can be synthesized in laboratory or in the factory through the chemical process if the ethanol is synthesized in the factory or if the ethanol is synthesized chemically in the lab it is we can say ethanol the same ethanol which is obtained through the biological process from the agricultural waste this is known as bioethanol so ethanol and bioethanol both are the same thing chemically both are the same thing the chemical formula of both ethanol is exactly same just the source from where it is obtained we can say ethanol or we can say bioethanol even bioethanol we can say ethanol because after the extraction of this when for example if you have come to me to ask the ethanol if you want some quantity of ethanol from me and i will give you some quantity of ethanol this is absolutely you uh, not clear if you are absolutely not able to identify if whether it is synthesized chemically or or it is obtained through the biological process so both are the exactly same thing ethanol is a fuel what is ethanol which i am going to explain you so ethanol is a fuel it is also known as ethyl alcohol ethanol is a flammable colorless liquid no no flammable ye bahut tezi se aag pakadta hai so it is a flammable colorless liquid the same type of alcohol found in alcoholic beverage so in alcoholic beverage for example the liquor ethanol or al ethyl alcohol is present in liquor also so the the same liquor the same ethanol is present in liquor also which is we are talking about to derive from the biological process from the agricultural waste chemically speaking bioethanol and ethanol both are exactly same the chemical formula of both are exactly same so the use of ethanol is as the alternative fuel so the gasoline gasoline is a major fuel which is used in the combustion in the engine so ethanol is the alternate of gasoline So gasoline is obtained from this uh, oil refineries where the crude oil, crude mining oil, not the edible oil, because edible oil it is always extracted from the oil seed crop. A mining oil that is the fuel oil, the crude which is extracted from the mines or oil well, that is refined and gasoline is being produced, petrol and diesel is being produced. So that is a costly and uh, uh, another thing that this is not a green fuel. The mining fuel is not a green fuel, costly also. So ethanol can be a very good alternative for that. And even ethanol is mixed in the petrol for our running vehicle to save the petrol also. so ethanol is an option for renewable energy so ethanol is considered as a renewable energy in this below photograph the photograph in the below photograph the formula of ethanol is being depicted this formula structure formula and chemical formula both are there this is common ethanol its chemical formula is c2h5oh because it has two carbon atom it has five hydrogen atom 1 2 3 4 5 and one oh is also attached now it is also hydrogen so c2h6o it can also be told but no oh is a one uh, article one and so it is known as that oh so c2h5oh is the chemical formula but structural formula two c are attached then 3h with one c and 
2H with 1OH with 1C. So this is the structural formula of ethanol. The structural formula more specifically chemically it is popularly known as C3 CH3 CH2 OH. So CS3 CH2 OH is the ethanol. Now the question that how ethanol is being extracted from the agricultural waste. So this is agricultural waste. Basically you can see uh, after the crop harvest, crop residue is there. This is dry crop residue and you have seen in first unit uh, lectures, either fourth or fifth lecture, the burning of crop residue. So this after the crop harvesting, the whole crop residue, dry crop residue is present in the field. If we don't have the option to manage this waste efficiently and eco-friendly manner, farmers used to go for the burning. And burning of this dry agricultural waste or burning of the dry crop residue is a faulty practice. Two other practices or three other practices or four other practices already have been taught. One is incorporated it into the soil directly, that is in situ waste management or on farm waste management. Second practice is that this can go on, this can undergo for the biogas production. Third practice is this can undergo for the composting. Fourth practice is this can undergo for the vermi composting. So the fifth practice or fifth option we have that we can utilize this agricultural waste for ethanol production. So first it is collected and its size is reduced. So it is being chopped, size is being reduced. Then pre-treatment is done. So the pre-treatment of this is done by uh, water and acid. So it is hydrolysis or it is known as acid hydrolysis or water hydrolysis. So by the weak acid, the pre-treatment is being done. So by the hydrolysis process, it is converted into sugar. So this is lignocellulose. Agricultural waste is rich in lignocellulose type of polysaccharide that is a carbohydrate. So this polysaccharide is to be converted into monosaccharide that is sugar, glucose. So glucose and pentose two things can be uh, converted. So after the pre-treatment, either we can get pentose or we can get glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6, pentose is C5H uh, something. Uh, so pentose is basically 5 carbon sugar and glucose is 6 carbon sugar. So two types of sugar monosaccharide is being obtained. So this solid and liquid is being separated. The solid part again goes to the hydrolysis. So pentose again when this monosaccharide pentose and glucose is obtained it will undergo for the fermentation. Through the fermentation ethanol is being generated so in in the process of ethanol first methanol is being generated then again fermentation process goes on and the ethanol is being generated but the liquid which we obtain from there it will have certain acids and water acids and ethanol not water acid and ethanol so this ethanol is being separated from this liquid so this separation process is known as distillation so from the dist by the distillation process ethanol is being separated so this fermentation is for uh, glucose that is 6 carbon carbohydrate and this fermentation is for the pentose that is 5 carbon uh, 5 carbon monosaccharide but Pentrone's rich hydrolysis is done and then the fermentation is being done. So after the distillation, ethanol is being extracted. So ethanol always being extracted from the agricultural waste, which is rich in carbohydrate, 
डेफिनेटली इन एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स आर प्रेजेंट इन पॉलीसेक्राइड फॉर्म वेन वी गो फॉर द कंपोस्टिंग और वेन वी गो फॉर द डाइजेशन दैट इज एनोरोबिक फॉर्म डाइजेशन इन दैट प्रोसेस ऑल्सो द पॉलीसेक्राइड विल बी ब्रोकन डाउन इन टू डाइसेक्राइड देन मोनोसेक्राइड but in the absence of oxygen and in the that uh, even here uh, uh, oxygen is absent because fermentation we do but there lot different type of acids are being generated and these acids are the raw material for the next step of bacteria and they generate methane in this process of ethanol production the acids are not required so we we need to separate that acids otherwise the acetogenesis or uh, bacteria will start to work and it will generate methane so this lignocellulose type of polysaccharide it is to be broken down into glucose and pentose so only sugar is required if the raw material is sugar and then we will go for the fermentation only then ethanol can be produced if the raw material is not sugar it is acetate or it is acetic acid it is fatty acid or it is amino acid then ethanol cannot be produced it will go for the methane production so this thing should be very clear in your mind that these lignocellulose type of lignocellulose content of agricultural waste through the pre treatment or through the acid hydrolysis it is converted into the shorter chain cellulose so lignocellulose through the chemical pulping it is converted into shorter chain and the cellulose material with acid hydrolysis it is converted into shorter chain cellulose then this shorter chain cellulose is also treated with NaOH here the acid is nitric acid HNO3 is being added in this hydrolysis acid hydrolysis nitric acid actually we can use four types of acid either either of any four type of acid one is phosphoric acid we can use sulfuric acid can also be used nitric acid can be used and hydrochloric acid can be used these are the four type of acids but more specifically or in most more common manner this nitric acid is being used for hydrolysis of the cellulose so the shorter chain cellulose is being obtained or some glucose is being obtained through this hydro acid hydrolysis so glucose which is obtained from the acid hydrolysis of cellulose that glucose directly undergo for the fermentation but the shorter chain cellulose which is obtained by the hydrolysis again we have to convert it into the glucose ultimate objective is that the lignocellulose material should be converted into glucose so and it is treated with NaOH so with the treatment of noh cellulose liquid is being we obtain cellulose liquid again noh and na2co3 that is sodium car, uh, sodium carbonate is being added so this will be converted into precipitated cellulose again this precipitated cellulose will be treated with the acids nitric acid or enzyme which is produced by the bacteria fermenting bacteria so again this precipitate cellulose which is a very simpler form of cellulose it is converted into glucose then this glucose will go for the fermentation process so this glucose may come from the conversion of cellulose to the glucose very small part of glucose is generated directly from the cellulose but the cellulose first is converted into shorter chain cellulose then it is converted into cellulose liquid then it is precipitated then this cellulose can 
again go for the acid hydrolysis and glucose is been generated so at last this glucose will undergo for the fermentation process so in this fermentation process process first glucose is converted into methanol then methanol is converted into ethanol and at last we can get ethanol so this ethanol as i told you here is being separated through the distillation process that i am i will explain to you further again this with the flow chart you understand the process of ethanol extraction for example rice destroys the waste so first it is shredded and it is converted into small pieces then water is added and it is uh, water is added and some heat is given so the hydrolysis process starts then enzyme is added or acid is added so by the enzymatic hydrolysis or by the acid hydrolysis it is converted into sugar this sugar may be the sugar may be c5 sugar or c6 sugar c5 sugar is known as pentose and c6 sugar is known as glucose then this pentose and glucose both are fermented by yeast and bacteria so yeast is added some bacteria is added it is being fermented and the next liquid which we get the liquid will have acid and ethanol then the distillation process is to be carried out after the distillation ethanol is being separated and it is collected separately so what is distillation distillation means there is a liquid having two components so we want to separate so we heat up it and then we again condense it and separately both the fractions can be collected so this is known as distillation process so this ethanol can be obtained through this process you can understood you can understand that ethanol can be extracted or ethanol can be obtained from the fermentation of glucose even in this flow chart i have told that ethanol is obtained from the fermentation of glucose this is bioethanol so bioethanol is our end product and the product of our desire because it is a biofuel but as it happened in case of biogas production when we have harvested the biogas or we have collected the biogas still the remaining part that is by product of that is left over part is there so it means whatever the process we will follow except composting and vermi composting because in composting and vermi composting the whole whole thing is converted into the new product but in biogas we are harvesting or collecting biogas and the remaining left over part is is again the waste just like that here ethanol is being produced so ethanol can be separated out through the distillation process but the by product or the remaining left over part will be there so it doesn't mean that we can throw it we should do something for the left over part also so it is stillage that is it is stillage so it goes to the separation because the left over part it will have liquid and solid also so the liquid and solid it can be separated out liquid and solid will be separated out again you remember my lecture of biogas production when i told you after the collection of biogas the remaining left over part which is known as digestive bioslurry it will have solid and liquid both part for the further use first we have to separate it out i told you that there are two methods i told you two methods told you actually basically but there are three methods so two methods which i told you one is screw press method and another is belt press method so even in that 
you remember i have shown you a photograph that how the belt press method will work third process is evaporation but evaporation nobody will go for the evaporation because evaporation means on the digested bioslurry you need to keep it in an open pond and allow the water to be evaporated and solid part should be dried in the pit only so it will a, it, it is a very lengthy or very time taking process so the belt press or screw press method is the good method just the same way after the distillation or even after the bio uh, uh, ethanol production the leftover part is <coughs> leftover part is having solid and liquid both part so through the belt press method solid is being separated and liquid is being separated so the separated solid part is again collected and this separated solid part can go to the boiler for the burning so in the boiler this solid part can be burned in and turbo generator can be run and electricity or heat can be generated so the both part one is ethanol is being separated ethanol is a biofuel and the solid part can also be burned or in the furnace and generator can be run electricity can be generated so this is the ethanol production and the process of ethanol production now you should know that what type of agricultural waste can undergo for the ethanol production think what type of agricultural waste can be used for ethanol production this is the question again go back and see we are producing ethanol from the glucose it means the waste which are rich in carbohydrate so that this carbohydrate doesn't matter the carbohydrate is of polysaccharide level because polysaccharide can be converted into monosaccharide there is no problem but protein rich or fat rich agricultural waste cannot go for the ethanol production for example doc we have soya bean soya bean seed is used to extract the soya bean oil which is edible oil then the remaining part is d oil cake which is protein rich highly rich in protein this cannot be convert this cannot be utilized as ethanol production because again the protein is going to be the waste only we need to extract the glucose and even because protein is present there during the fermentation process methane will be generated rather than the ethanol so the carbohydrate rich agricultural waste can be utilized for the ethanol production so these are the waste from the sugar industry where molasses bagasse and juice also extracted juice can also go for the ethanol production so this is the reason ethanol is one of the by product and one of the not by product even ethanol is the secondary product of sugar industry because so sugar industry is basically is to crush the sugar cane for producing sugar but the waste which is produced by the sugar cane industry that is also rich in sugar so this is the reason that ethanol is the secondary product of sugar industry except that wheat rice corn and millets and sorghums these things can also be used the waste of these crops it is also rich in carbohydrate and it can be used for uh, ethanol production the organism which are suitable for ethanol production bacteria fungi and yeast so in bacteria i have given the name clostridium thermocellum is one bacteria which can be used gymomonas is the another bacteria or e coli 
E. coli is the another bacteria which can be used. Fungi, Monilla, Neurosporis, or Aspergillus and Trichoderma. These fungi can be used in yeast. Saccharomyces yeast can be used for the biogas production. So, in the fermentation process, see this is the fermentation. So, this fermentation, these bacteria, these fungi will work or yeast will work in the fermentation process and ethanol will be produced. So, what are the advantages of biogas production or what are, the, sorry, not biogas, uh, advantages of bioethanol? First, that bioethanol production is neutralizes the carbon availability in the atmosphere because the carbon dioxide which is produced from the bioethanol it is the equal to the that amount which plant has already utilized during the production so the same amount of carbon dioxide is being produced so this carbon balancing in the atmosphere can be done but uh, carbon balancing because if we are emitting carbon dioxide this we are polluting the environment because uh, there are several other sources also which are emitting carbon dioxide the emission produced by the combustion of ethanol is less reactive in environment than the gasoline. This is the one and another advantage. Exhaust gases of ethanol combustion is much more clear due to the complete combustion. What happens in case of gasoline? Sometimes some unburned fuel or partially burned fuel is also being exhausted. But Ethanol, ethanol is a highly inflammable and in a shorter time complete combustion occurs. So there is no exhaust of partially combusted gas. So the pollution is less or the, the environmental pollution is less if we use ethanol. Ethanol blending in petrol is increasing the life of engine. Ethanol blending in petrol ensures the fuel security for future. Ethanol is known as the renewable energy source because ethanol is produced from the crop waste or ethanol is produced from the crop residue. So it addresses the environmental pollution issue or it is considered as the renewable source of energy. Bioethanol is also degradable. And if you are not using bioethanol, so bioethanol can be again degradable and degraded into the less toxic and, and less toxic chemicals than the fossil fuel. So ethanol blending in petrol is necessary basically. So whatever the bike you people are running through by your pet by the petrol, when you go to fill the petrol uh, the tank of your bike in a petrol pump whatever the petrol which they are using ethanol is already blended in that petrol so it is a government rule that ethanol blending in the petrol is necessary and the automobile companies whatever the bike and car or engines they are manufacturing it is compatible to the ethanol but uh, about 10 to so about 10 to 25 percent of ethanol blending in the petrol is being done but the engine uh, manufacturing companies of the automobile industries they have come with the engine which can run through the ethanol only so ethanol can reduce the dependency of mining oil petrol and diesel which is very costly, which is very uh, pollutant also. So this, if we we have the second alternate ethanol, so ethanol can reduce the dependency of our ourselves to the petrol and diesel. This is the one aspect, and this is the reason. Sometimes what happens? You have seen here. I told you the agricultural waste which are rich in sugar can be converted into ethanol even what happened in america in last 
few years it uh, it has become a big issue also the corn crop this corn makka maize this maize or corn crop which was produced in america people were striving for the corn but all the corns are converted into the ethanol so the the, the principle or the theory is that corn is a food grain so if we are cultivating or we are we are growing corn in our agriculture so this corn should feed the people because it is a food grain it should feed the people but the it should feed the people except that the waste which is generated from this agricultural activity that is corn production or maize production that waste should undergo for the ethanol production but ethanol is a very important costly and energy source cheap and uh, costly means costly is like because people wants that petrol is petrol is very costly availability of petrol is less so the ethanol is the second option so if the people will demand the ethanol more means ethanol means will be valuable so ethanol is cheaper than the petrol ethanol is valuable and ethanol is necessary even for the petroleum industry to blend it into the petrol so ethanol was in high demand though the theory is theory is saying that ethanol should be produced from the waste but what the industry did just from the food grain corn they have converted it into ethanol and what happened the corn was in shortage in america and america was importing the corn from the other countries the another thing which you another example which we you can uh, recall in your mind every season you will see a news in the television news channels that wheat you know wheat uh, wheat is harvested in march april there is a huge there is a large system of government purchase of wheat so government purchase the wheat from the farmers and stored in the fci godowns this wheat which is stored in the fci godowns it is basically to maintain the buffer stock it is basically to distribute to the poor people through public distribution system and this is basically for supplying to the military people in the military canteen for the food of the military people so government need lot of wheat so this is the reason why government purchase lot of wheat from the farmers except the government some uh, private vendors they also purchase wheat from the farmers because this britannia you know biscuit industry needs wheat so wheat is also purchased by the biscuit industries and bran industries several other industries they also purchase but government purchase system is very big they purchase wheat and store in fci godowns government per the godowns are not in a good condition even some godowns for wheat purchase some fci units they purchase wheat more than the storage capacity so some wheat is stored in the godown and lot of wheat is stored in the open yard just by covering them with a thick plastic sheet that is tripal tripal se dhak kar ke yeh rakhi jati hai every year there is a news that because of the faulty system of wheat storage in rainy season wheat is getting destroyed it is purchased by the government system in month and in, in the month of may and june april may or june you can say then after that in july there is a onset of monsoon so every year this comes in a news and it has it is becoming a big issue that why the fci go down is wasting lot of wheat then there is a news that is it is a nexus of ethanol lobby they want that this wheat should be destroyed then this ethanol lobby will purchase this spoiled wheat at a cheaper price and convert it into ethanol so wheat is a carbohydrate rich grain wheat basically is a food grain but if it is spoiled 
then ethanol can be produced with a, because for the ethanol production we need to ferment it so it doesn't matter whether it is spoiled by the wetting or not so this is the reason in india this story every year this story run but here i want to tell you the ethanol what is ethanol what is the importance of ethanol how ethanol is being produced ethanol is a biofuel this is a bio conversion of agricultural waste so agricultural waste because up to the last of before last lecture you were just thinking that waste should be converted into compost that is not only one option brick pitting is another option biogas is the option then ethanol is one more option with that i am telling you here so this option i think this should be very clear to you so this is the learning outcome of today's lecture that we understood that biofuel such valuable biofuel ethanol can be produced from the agricultural waste it is a green energy and it is necessary for the petroleum industry this is the alternate for the petroleum product or it is important ingredient in petroleum industry so this is the learning outcome for today's lecture these are the references you can further read it bioethanol production advantage disadvantage and environmental impact this article is published in the environmental biotechnology one more article is published in fermentation that is production of bioethanol from agricultural waste using residual thermal energy of a cogeneration plant in the distillation phase thank you very much